Welcome back to the Chasing Happiness podcast, an honest podcast about finding happiness, what it really means, and the process of getting there. My name is Crystal, and today I'm super excited because I'm actually going to be talking to Crystal, which if you listen to this podcast, you know these things don't happen very often. So Crystal is actually a clutter expert and a feng shui designer, which I probably did not pronounce that correctly, but she is on a mission to help women declutter and design workspaces that empower them, which I, of course, am super in love with. So Crystal, before we get into sort of how you got here and what you do, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone who's listening? Certainly. Um, (laughs) um, You kind of took the words right out of my mouth. I am a feng shui designer um, and a clutter expert, and I help them to declutter and design a workspace that really empowers them to create a life and a business that they truly love. I love this. And I think this is so relevant because over the last couple of years, as we were chatting just a second ago, people have sort of been forced into spaces they weren't necessarily utilizing before or to create spaces in places they never thought they would have to have a workspace. (laughs) And so clutter really has become a huge part of a lot of people's lives. And mentally, that can be something that's just so overpowering for people. So I love that this is what you do. How did you sort of walk this path? Well, I I sort of, I sort of feel like I was always on this path to be quite honest. Like the interior design thing was always my thing, even from when I was a little girl. Um, I, I was always playing with my Barbie dream house. I was always even rearranging my own bedroom. Right. Um, I think designing your space really runs in my family. It just was a thing. Um, I I helped my girlfriends as like a teenager. I was always the friend they would call even as an adult, but I, you know, I went back to school in my thirties to, to go to school, to become an interior designer. And it was in my psychology class. I was sort of introduced to feng shui. Um, but it wasn't until much later in my career when I started really following that path and started taking on my own private clients, kind of, starting my own business instead of just working for someone else. When I first started taking on private clients, they would all get stuck with decluttering. Like they wanted me to help them feng shui their space. Um, At the time I, on my journey, I was working with a a large group of women and we were all sort of on this healing journey and trying to repair our relationships with men and trying to find love. And so I had, I was just sort of getting started with, um, professionally doing feng shui professionally for clients. And I was still working, you know, a job. And, <laughs> and so I had offered my services to them to, um, to have some guinea pigs to, to sure. like help me be able to, because I was going from working um, in person to this virtual thing, right? Cause these women lived all over the world. And so I was a little bit ahead of the pandemic switching over to this virtual thing. And so um I would, I would be talking to them about how we were going to redo their space and, and get them into alignment with, with energetically to be able to create this romantic love relationship. And every one of them would come back to me and talk to me about why they couldn't declutter certain things. Like Mm -hmm. they didn't have room to create something new because they couldn't get rid of what, what was something old. Interesting. And so it really kind of took me deeper into the psychology part of my work. Um, I was also on my own healing journey at that time. And so I was delving into all of this at the same time. And I had never in my life had a problem with decluttering. Like just, it was very easy for me to declutter and, and, and design something new, but I, I, I hurt myself at work. Um, my, my business was kind of starting to take off. But then I, I hurt myself at work very badly. Um, and it was a workman's comp injury that put me on bed rest for close to three years before wow. I could get surgery. <laughs> and so in that time, I struggled with being able to like function, take care of myself sure. and take care of my space. And so the clutter kind of built up some. Um, and as that happened, you know, when it was time for me to finally really face it. I was even stuck. Um, But luckily I'd been working with clients for a few years already and had all of this sort of knowledge that I'd built up, but never had to apply to my own self. Like I'd 
coached other people through it, but I'd never really sure. lived it myself. And so um, I'd hired a business coach at the time to help teach me all the things I didn't know about running a business. Like I knew how to <laughs> be a designer and I knew how to do feng shui and stuff, but I didn't know how to be a business owner. Right. And, um, and so it, it was, I had been working with her for about a year, year and a half. And I went to this live event and she had invited us all to do 30 days of live streams on Facebook to sort of get over the camera thing, right? Which, sure. um, which was so much of a struggle for everybody. And I wanted to make it useful for people. And so what I ended up doing was I, I didn't jump into it right away. I went back home from the event and I figured it out and it was, it was right at the end of April. And so what I did was for the month of May, I created this whole big decluttering challenge um, for my audience. And I was, and I approached it in this whole different way because my physical body like couldn't move and I had to do it in these different kind of chunks. And so in this approaching it differently, it was just this eye-opening experience kind of for me. And it really transformed even how I work with clients from there forward. Like it was, it was quite an interesting journey, really. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. And I love that you spent a month sort of just focused on how can I do this differently than most people because I'm in a situation where I can't do it the same way. Because I think what often happens is people see shows like Home Edit on Netflix and they're like, this is exactly how I have to do this. But that doesn't work for everyone, right? Because everyone has a different lifestyle. Everyone has a different process of what's important in their life and what matters and what doesn't. So I kind of love that you've approached it from this different angle. Yeah. I ended up developing even it, it, not that I developed, I shouldn't say that I had already kind of developed, but it helped me really refine how I help clients to be able to declutter. Um, and because of my, you know, my studying of feng shui and it really helped deepen my understanding of clutter's effect and its relationship, like what is it and why do we have it? And, and what is it? Because it's really more of a reflection of like our mental state. So it's, it's very, very important, but it helped me to develop my own framework around how we go about it. And, and it, it, it was like a very healing, cathartic sort of thing. It helped me get into this different level and, and learning to listen to what the clutter is, was telling me mm -hmm. so that I could get underneath um, and really heal uh, some of those trauma pieces, you know, that it is reflecting. That's huge. And you've touched on something that I think a lot of people who listen to this podcast are going to have questions about because most people have heard in some way what feng shui is, but they don't necessarily understand it. And what you touched on is sort of this mental connection with the things that we have in the space that we live in. So do you want to tell people sort of why that's so important and what it is exactly? Sure. Well, feng shui is, is really just the study of the flow of energy in your space. Very simply put, that, that's what it is. It's the study and manipulation of that energy. Um, but it's because like you have an energetic frequency, right? We all do. Right. We all have our own unique energetic frequency, but, and so does your home and your home is really an extension of your frequency, right? Everything you own, everything you purchase is a reflection of what you think and what you believe because everything that you think and what you believe has been taught to you somewhere in your life growing right. up, right? So everything that you purchase is a reflection of what you think and what you believe. And it, it maybe sometimes it starts out as clutter, but it always becomes clutter as you grow and evolve. And a lot of people don't understand like even what, like what clutter is versus what trash is. Mm. But, but because of this, sort of symbiotic relationship that you have with your space, right? It's, it's, it's the place where you can go to escape from the rest of the world. It really is your sanctuary space. And it allows you to just sort of take off all the masks, right? And be completely, you know, just yourself. Right. But therefore it also reflects all of the things that you think and believe, so if you have things that are keeping you stuck, limiting beliefs, like scarcity beliefs or worthiness beliefs or obligation beliefs that, that keep you from really having the life that you want, all of that is going to be reflected in, in your home. 
in, in your in the space that you inhabit most. And so if we just learn how to look at it and read it and, and listen to what it's telling us, we can literally change our lives by transforming our space so that it reflects something different to us. Like a, like a 3D vision board is kind of what I call it. Um, because that. it's literally reflecting a, a different belief to you, a different belief system that you have come up with and you've created and, and you've implemented into your space. Um, but yeah, that's. I love this. And I love this for a number of reasons, because I think over the last couple of years, especially as we had touched on before we started recording, lots of people have sort of been forced to create spaces. They have been forced into places they never thought that they would be. And we've really, as people here in North America specifically, we've really been forced to look at like this space that I am calling home. Does this really feel comfortable to me? Does it reflect what I want? Does it give me the things that I want? Like I know for my clients, my friends, my family, lots of people have reassessed even just the physical location where they live and moved somewhere else because it doesn't feel in alignment anymore. So right. For people who are listening and and find themselves in that position where they just it it doesn't feel right, but they don't know what to do. What's your suggestion of where to start? Like, how do people even start to rethink this process? Well, I, like I say, I have a very specific method of of how 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 I work with clients because I think this is how it works best. <laughs> to be honest, you can't like when it comes to the feng shui of your space. And, and trying to get into alignment. You can't create something new until you've released what's old, right? So you really have to start with decluttering. You have to declutter everything that is not in alignment with who you, not just who you are, but who you are becoming, mm. right? Because, because you are becoming a new version of yourself always, right? Yes. That is what growth is. That is what energy flowing is because that, that flow of energy in your space is the same energy that is the spark of life in your being and, and what keeps you growing and you alive. And so because those two things are in sync, if, you are, if you're not growing, obviously you are stagnating energy too. But if you're always growing, you're going to outgrow your the things that you right. once needed and had, right? So you have to start with decluttering and get down to the, the basics of, of just what do I need? What do I use? What do I love? And then we are, then we're at like a, a starting point, right? It's not bare because you, you can't get sure. rid of everything you own. And, I mean, I've done that. I've done that uh, five times. Actually, I've gotten rid of everything I own and started completely over. Um, <clears throat> well, not everything. I at least had clothes on to go to the store. Like sure. it wasn't, but you know, I had less than a suitcase <clears throat> of that, what I own. And, but you know, that's really not feasible. But if we get down to, let's get rid of everything, you know, that, that is clutter. Now we have room to, 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 well, like design the space for who you're going to become so that we can now get you into alignment energetically right? From a, from a feng shui standpoint, right? We can do right. the calculations and the math and make sure that you're in the right place. Um, right. And we put you in like your power positions and all that. And then we can design the space around that so that it's designed for that future version of you, but you still have to start at the beginning, which is that decluttering process. Um, yeah which can be scary for a lot of people. So I, like you, have totally, more than once, totally sold everything I owned, got rid of everything, started over. In fact, just did it this past October. I moved across the country and did it. Um, and it's a very liberating experience, but it doesn't matter how many times you do it. It's also a little scary because you have a moment of I'm attached to things. And then you have to have that conversation with yourself about why am I attached to it? Do I really need to be attached to it? Can I let it go and it can have a separate life and now I will move on because I am a different person than when I first gathered whatever it happens to be. So I love that you touched on that, but it can be scary for people and for everyone who is listening to the podcast, the one suggestion I would make personally just going through the experience is create different places to put things until you are ready to let them go. Don't hold on to them forever because you can get stuck in that as well. But 
when you are decluttering, a lot of what we hold on to in my personal experience is the emotion attached to the thing from when we very first collected it, purchased it, whatever. That emotion doesn't go away if you get rid of the thing. Like I had, especially when I moved here in October, I had so many things that I had collected over the three years that I had been in the place I was before that realistically, it just didn't make sense to hold on to you because I hadn't touched them again in so long. I am so sorry. I don't know what happened. I just got kicked out of the room. (laughs) Don't be sorry at all. Technical difficulties do happen. So I am glad you are back. Um, One thing I do want to touch on a little bit before we end, because I don't want to keep you too long. And I do have a few questions that I typically ask people who come on the podcast. But one thing I do want to ask you is for people who want to get in touch with you, people who maybe want to go through this process, but they've never thought about doing it before. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Um, Well, two things. I'm going to actually offer two suggestions because um, what the best way, if they want to get started with decluttering, and I don't know what you started to say because I got booted out of the room, but I do have my own proprietary method for decluttering, as I said, and you can download that for free. Um, I'd like to give that just for a free gift to your audience so they can download that for free at declutteryourmindset.com. And I will then email it to you uh, along with a whole bunch of other free stuff that will help you get started in that process um, to be able to to declutter and design that space. And um, I also have I have a new-ish YouTube channel that I put out new content for free as well every week. Um, to be able to help you to design a a space that you love. That's amazing. I will post for everyone listening in the show notes, all of the links to everything, social media included, um, so that you can follow Crystal, you can get in touch, you can check out the stuff that she offers, all of that fun stuff. But before I let you go, Crystal, I'm going to ask you the questions because when I don't ask the questions, the community tends to get a little angry. So (laughs) the first question is, what inspires you? What inspires me? Um, goodness, my grandchildren inspire me. Um, my children inspire me. Um, nature inspires me. Um, my clients inspire me. Um, women in general inspire me. I love all of those things for so many reasons. One, how many grandbabies do you have? Cause grandbabies are amazing. Um, I have two and the third one is on the way. Oh, amazing. Um, I love that you picked more than one thing as well, because I think often what happens is we all sort of get stuck in the mindset of we have to be inspired by this one thing, but life is so many different complex things. Like I'm inspired right now, even though I barely own anything because I just moved here, (laughs) I'm inspired to go and like reassess the things that I have just by having this conversation with you. Right. So I love that you picked a number of things. The next question is, if you could go back and give yourself a piece of advice, what would it be? Actually, I don't, I don't know. I always struggle with that question. Like, what would I go back and, and, and I actually heard somebody say something the other day that, that really, I think, put it into perspective for me, because if I could go back and tell myself anything, it wouldn't do me any good because I'm not her. But if my future self could come back and tell me today something, um, it would be go for it. Like fear mm-hmm. or no fear, jump in with both feet and fucking go for it because win or lose, it, it's going to happen. Like tomorrow's going to come yeah. and um, you're going to get to the end with either regrets or not regrets. So yes. go for it. Oh, I love that. And I love that you gave the answer that you did, because what I often find when I ask this question or I have this conversation with people is some people know exactly where they want to go. And other people are like, would I have really listened if I told myself anyway? Because, you know, we are different people, right? We're constantly changing and growing. So I love that that was your answer. And it's funny because now that you've said that, I'm thinking to myself, like, if my future self came back, I'm not sure what she would say. I'm not sure that I would listen, right? Like there are so many of these other things, but what you chose to say to yourself is actually a tattoo that I'm having done because (laughs) I think a hundred percent, like for me, one of my personal beliefs is 
if it scares you, you should jump in wholeheartedly because there is a lesson to be learned and there is growth to happen. And so that's what the tattoo is going to be. Because I think it's so important for us to remember, like, just because we're afraid of something, just because there is that level of fear doesn't mean there isn't good things on the other side of it. Right. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Always, always the best things that I have that have happened in my life have been on the other side of it. So yes, a hundred percent. I believe that. Oh, amazing. If you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Oh man, I, I actually do this as a religious sort of practice. Um, I, yeah, it was something I learned out of the book, think and grow rich years ago. Right. Um, he, he talks about having this sort of mental space with this council of advisors and how you can talk to anyone. So I literally have an entire panel of people that I talk to on a regular basis, um, for all sorts of things. Um, And yeah, it's a pretty long list. I have versions of like my younger self, my future self, you know, different coaches and mentors um, that I've worked with, um, coaches and mentors that I, uh, that I would like to work with at some point. Um, Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good list. I love that. And I love the idea of this sort of council of people, because let's face it, we're never going to get every single answer from one person. So I love the idea you know, check in with all of these different people around your, oh, this is brilliant. That, that's a fantastic answer. Thank you. The very last question is, what does happiness mean to you? Well, that's probably the hardest question that you've asked me <laughs> out of all of them. <laughs> um, it, it very much equates to peace for me, peace and prosperity. Um, and just, yeah, that, I think that's it in my body, like that physical sense Mm. of, of peace and prosperity, um, and just joy. I love that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. I think a lot of people have taken the last couple of years and thought about like creating spaces, but I think a lot of people are going to benefit from this conversation because most people just put things in a space so that it's functional and they don't think about the details of the spaces we are creating. Even just in this conversation we're having, I'm thinking about the things that are sitting next to me or that are on the table where I am. And I'm thinking like, you know what? That doesn't feel right. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I think so many people are going to benefit from this conversation. So thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. And I love that you said that, actually. That's one of my favorite quotes is that design is in the details. The details are not the details. They make the design. Um, That is true about every interior design space I've ever created. But it's also true for life Mm. in every way. The details are what makes it important. The details are what matter. Um, And that's what we really have to get down to is the details. Yes. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for joining me today. You are so welcome. All the crystals get together. Yes, all the crystals. I love it. I love it. I love it. Even though it's spelt differently, as soon as you got in touch with me, I was like, ooh, I can have a crystal on the podcast. This is totally happening. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you to everyone who's listening. I appreciate that you guys come back week after week. Again, I will post in the show notes all of the links so that you can get in touch with Crystal and you can work with her and you can figure out what is going to work best for you. I appreciate that you guys come back week after week. I cannot tell you six years into this podcast how much it means to me that I get to have these conversations. So I hope you guys have a magical week. If you enjoyed this conversation or you found it helpful, please share it with someone who you think might enjoy it as well. And we will chat with you guys next week. Bye for now.